So far we have looked at PN junctions made of the same material, in particular having the same band gap, a so-called homojunction. Another option is to construct a PN junction using two different materials, one for the n-type region and another for the p-type region. This forms a so-called heterojunction. These heterojunctions have different properties and are the subject of this video. First, we will discuss why we want to use a heterojunction, then we will show the types of heterojunctions, and finally, we will construct a band diagram. So why do we want a heterojunction? Well, as discussed in previous videos, a solar cell can be described by the Shockley diode equation. One of the parameters we obtained in that way for our PN junction under illumination, the solar cell, is the open circuit voltage. If we look at the equation for the open circuit voltage, we see that the only term that is not a constant or related to the photocurrent is J0. This is the saturation current density and is given by the following relation that shows that J0 depends on the intrinsic carrier concentration of the material. In turn, the intrinsic carrier concentration is related to the band gap of the material and is thus a material property. That gives us the tantalizing prospect to change the open circuit voltage by controlling the saturation current density. In particular, we can see that if we reduce J0 by increasing the band gap of either the N or the P-type material, the open circuit voltage of the solar cell can be increased. On top of that, changing the band gap of one of the materials offers us the opportunity to control the absorption of light and optimize the current generation. So plenty of arguments to look more closely at the heterojunction. Before we can construct a band diagram, we need to know how the band gaps of the different materials will align. This alignment is related to the electron affinity of both materials that will make up the junction. As a reminder, the electron affinity is the potential difference between the bottom of the conduction band and the vacuum level. The work function is another important parameter and is defined as the potential difference between the vacuum level and the Fermi energy and is controlled by the doping concentration. In this table you can see different values for the electron affinity of different semiconductor materials and as you can see that can change uh, quite a bit. We distinguish three types of band alignment in the heterojunction. The first type is called straddling, which means that the high band gap material encloses the band gap of the low band gap material. The second type is called staggered, where the conduction band edge of one material is positioned inside the band gap of the other material, while the valence band is below the valence band of the other material. Finally, the last type is called broken gap. Here the band gaps are completely misaligned, which means that the a uh, conduction band edge of one material is below the top of the valence band of the other material. Here you can see an overview of all possible band gap alignments. In this course we will focus on the straddling uh, band alignment. Now that we know how the bands will align, we can construct a band diagram of a heterojunction. For this example, we will look at a heterojunction consisting of a low band gap N-type and a high band gap P-type material. For the low band gap N-type semiconductor, the N will be presented using a lowercase letter. Conversely, for the high band gap P-type semiconductor, the P will be written with an uppercase letter. The position of the Fermi level indicates the type of material. When the materials are not in contact with each other, the vacuum level is drawn horizontal. We now can clearly see that both materials have different work functions and electron affinities. This results in a potential energy difference in both the valence band edges and conduction band edges of the n-type material and the p-type material. The parameters shown in these figures are related to each other via two equations which we will derive now. First, we can relate the electron affinities to each other with this simple equation. And after rewriting, we obtain this equation which shows that the difference between the conduction band edges is equal to the difference between the electron affinities of the two materials. 
Next, we can relate the band gaps of the two materials, resulting in this equation. Rearranging this equation, we obtain this rela relation, which shows that the difference between the valence and conduction band edges is equal to the difference between the band gaps. This band gap difference is simply written as delta Eg. The two equations we obtained together form the so-called electron affinity rule, which in essence states that all energy differences between the two materials can be expressed in the electron affinities. We assume this rule holds when an interface is formed between two semiconductors with two different band gaps. In reality, this is, however, usually not the case, as mixing of the materials can occur at the interface, thereby changing the chemical composition in a narrow region around the interface, or the lattices of the materials can be mismatched, resulting in different properties. But these effects will not be taken into account for, this for the moment. Now we can continue with the band diagram. When the two materials form an interface, the Fermi levels align. The bands of the n-type material then bend upwards and of the p-material uh, bend downwards, similarly as we have seen for a p and homojunction. The vacuum level is continuous and bands with the depletion region. The width of the depletion region is indicated by Ln and Lp. The difference between the valence band edges and the conduction band edges are assumed to be the same as when the two materials were separate, following the electron affinity rule. The band banding results in a built-in voltage in both N-type and P-type materials, which is also visible in the vacuum level offset. These two voltages add up to the total built-in voltage. We can again relate some properties to each other, starting with the built-in voltage and the two work functions of the two materials. Since the Fermi levels of both materials are aligned, the built-in voltage is equal to the difference between the work functions of the two materials. The work functions can also be related to other properties which are not directly evident. Here we can see that the sum of the electron affinity and the band gap is equal to the sum of the work function and the energy difference between the Fermi level and the valence band edge. By rewriting this expression, we can relate the work function to other parameters. The same derivation can be performed for the n-type material, resulting in the same equation where the p is interchanged by an n. When combining the equations we derived, we obtain the following relation for the built-in voltage. This equation can be expressed in different forms, such as this one. These equations allow us to calculate the value of different parameters characterizing the heterojunction, but we will not go into more detail in this video. Now that we have the band diagram fully constructed, we can analyze the junction in more detail. Especially the, deple the depletion region is interesting, since the band banding and offset results in different carrier transport characteristics compared to a homojunction. When we look at the conduction band, we see a step in the conduction band. Since this step determines the potential barrier for electron injection from the n-type material to the p-type material, it follows that the increase of the potential barrier reduces this electron injection, as is reflected in the smaller saturation current density. This implies that the electron injection in a heterojunction follows the same drift diffusion mechanism as for a pn homojunction, albeit with a higher potential barrier. However, when we look at the valence band, we can see that there is a peak present. This rather complex alignment will control the uh, whole flow from the P to the n-type material in two different ways. First, injection across the potential barrier can be facilitated in a similar way as for a PN homojunction, or holes may tunnel through the barrier. This analysis shows that for a heterojunction, different transport mechanism can act at the same time compared to a homojunction, for which only the drift diffusion mechanism is relevant. To summarize, we have seen that using a heterojunction, we are able to change the VOC. We discussed the three 
types of band alignment when a junction between two semiconducting materials having different band gaps is formed. And we constructed a band diagram for a straddling type uh, junction.